Mount Doom. Um, bottom of that page, which is 933, <clears throat> Sam tells Frodo, it looks every step of 50 miles, or he says to himself, it took every step, it looks every step of 50 miles. And that'll take a week if it takes a day with Mr. Frodo as he is. And we're told never for long that hope died in his staunch heart, and always until now he had taken some thought for their return. But the bitter truth came home to him at last. <coughs> Sam comes to this realization. They're not coming home. If they make it to Mount Doom, that'll be good in and of itself. And so he thinks to himself, so that was the thought. That was the job I felt I had to do when I started. To help Mr. Frodo to the last step and then die with him. Well, if that's the, the job, then I must do it. But I would dearly like to see Bywater again and Rosie Cotton and her brother, blah, 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 blah. And we're told, even as hope died in Sam or seemed to die, it was turned to a new strength. Sam's plain hobbit face grew stern, almost grim as the will hardened in him. Notice, we're told as the hope died in Sam or seemed to die. Okay, that or seemed to die is pretty important because Tolkien is telling us it didn't really. But his hope has become more what? Or what has tempered his hope? Realistic yeah, reality. Sam kind of, up until this point, kind of operated along this thing of, you know, the fairy tale ending, we'll all get back and live happily ever after. And now he's kind of realizing, it doesn't look all that likely. I think we're going to die here. And even though he still has a little hope, we're told his will hardens in him. In other words, we're going to achieve this no matter what. If I have to carry Frodo all the way up the mountain myself, we're going to achieve it. All right? So they go on, and page 937, we're going to start skipping a bunch. Um, I will email the exam today. I didn't bring it to class intentionally. I'll email it to you. You'll still have a week and everything. All the instructions will be very clear. Page 937, just a couple, just a couple pages after where we were before. Um, Sam wakes up Fredo. And Frodo gets up quickly and he says, I can't do it, Sam. I can't manage it. It's such a weight. Okay. And Sam knew before he spoke that it was vain and that such words might do more harm than good. But he says it anyways. Let me carry it for you, Master. You know I would and gladly as long as I have my strength. Frodo's eyes go all weird. He says, no, don't touch me. It's mine. Be, be off. And he says, no, Sam, you have to understand it's my burden. No one else can bear it. Too late now, Sam, dear. It's too late now. What is Frodo telling Sam? I have no will left in the matter. Okay? The ring controls me. You can't help me in that way again. I am almost in its power now. I could not give it up. They haven't even reached Mount Doom. And Frodo's just told them. I can't give it up. And if you tried to take it, I should go mad. Okay? Sam nods. Okay, I understand. But let's lighten our load at least. Make it a little bit easier. So, you know, Sam dumps all his cooking gear. They dump all their other stuff. So all, their, all they have now are their elven cloaks. All right? And Sam's thinking it's going to be a long way to Mount Doom. And how are we going to make it? I, so he starts giving more of his food and water to Frodo. Page 940. Skip another couple pages. Sam says, now for it. Now for the last gasp. He looks his eyes up the mountain. They're at the very base of the mountain. And he thinks, I said I'd carry him if it came to it, and I will. 
Come, Mr. Fredo, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you in it as well. Up you get, come on. And what does he realize? He gets Frodo on his back. And how heavy is Frodo? He's like a feather. He's so wasted away. And what else? The ring's been gnawing at him. Yeah, he hasn't put it on a lot, but he is becoming wraith-like. Okay? And so they make their way up. And Sam looks down and he sees how far they've come. He doesn't know how far up the mountain they have to go. And we're told on page 942 about the path they're looking for. The path was not put there for the purposes of Sam. He did not know it, but he was looking at Sauron's road from Baradur to the Samoth Naur, the chambers of fire. Out from the dark tower's huge western gate, it came over a deep abyss, blah, 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 blah. There was a path that Sam finds. But how he was to get up the slope to it, he did not know. First, he must ease his aching back, so he puts Frodo down. And Frodo goes, oh, crawl. Okay. And so they start to crawl. And notice we're told, like small gray insects, they crept up the slope. They come to the path and they find it's nice and broad and it's paved. Okay, it's not like going off road for a while. If you've ever been backpacking and you've left a trail and you've gone cross country for a while, my dad and brother and I did this a few times at Yosemite National Park. You you leave the beaten path and you go up and over a ridge. It's a lot harder, even though it's a shortcut, so to speak. All right. So as they make their way, Frodo's hand starts to reach up to the chain on his neck. And Sam kneels by him. And Frodo's top of 943, help me, Sam, help me, help me. Hold my hand. He spotted us. And Frodo takes, Sam's, uh, Sam takes Frodo's hands and holds them down, etc. And a sudden weight smote him and he crashed forward, tearing the backs of his hands that still clasped his master's. He knew what had happened, for above him as he lay, he heard a wicked voice, heard a hated voice. Wicked master. Wicked master. Cheats us. Cheats me. You mustn't go that way. You mustn't hurt. Just give it to us. Yes, yes. Give it to us. Give it to us. Okay. What did Frodo and Gollum swear by? The precious. What did Gollum swear? That he would never let him, Sauron, have it. Okay. He didn't swear that he would never let the precious be destroyed. But he knows what Frodo's thinking, because he knows where they are. Sam gets up, throws Gollum off, and suddenly Frodo stands up, bottom of the page. Down, 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 you creeping thing, and out of my path. Your time is at an end. Prepare for death. <laughs> You cannot betray me or slay me now. Okay? Then suddenly, top of 944, as before, under the eaves of the Emmy Mule, Sam saw these two rivals with other vision. In other words, he's not seeing these with his eyes. A crouching shape, scarcely more than the shadow of a living thing, a creature now wholly ruined and defeated, yet filled with a hideous lust and rage. And before it stood stern, untouchable now by pity, a figure robed in white. Why does Sam see Frodo robed in white? But at its breast it held a wheel of fire. Out of the fire there spoke a commanding voice. Notice where the voice is coming from. It's holding the figure is holding a wheel of fire like this. And the voice speaks from the wheel of fire. Notice, the voice doesn't come out of Frodo's mouth. What does the voice say? Be gone and trouble me no more. If you touch me ever again, you shall be cast yourself into the fire of doom. Who or what is speaking? Is it the ring? Is it Frodo through the ring? 
because Frodo is corrupted by the ring? Nobody knows for sure. Okay? What is clear is the voice does come from the ring of fire. Okay? Or the wheel of fire. The crouching shape backs away. Okay? Notice Frodo is now untouchable by pity. And he's dressed in white. Okay? It's a biblical image from the book of Revelation. Those who overcome are given white robes. Has Frodo overcome? No. <laughs> okay. Why is he untouchable by pity? Because he is overcome. Frodo's will is identifiable and identifiable at this point, the will of the ring. The ring wants to continue. Okay? Doesn't mean Frodo's gonna, you know, have a cell phone and call, you know, 666 to Barad-dur and call Sauron. Okay? It's away. Why? He recognizes authority. There's something in Frodo's voice or something in the Wheel of Fire's voice that Gollum realizes, don't mess around. What did the voice say again? If you touch me ever again, you shall be cast yourself into the fire of doom. Okay, keep in mind, Tolkien makes clear repeatedly what that word doom means. Judgment. It doesn't mean you will be cast into hell fire, where you will burn eternally. No, it means you will be cast into the fire of judgment. That is, the judging will be a fire. Okay? The vision passed, and what does Sam see? He sees little old Frodo and little old Gollum. And he says, Look out, he'll spring. Go, master, go. And Frodo says, yes, I must go. Farewell, Sam. This is the end at last. On Mount Doom, doom, judgment, as well as choice shall fall. Frodo goes on, and Sam's like, gotcha now. Turn you around, SOB. Okay? At last I can deal with you. He leaps forward, drawn blade, and Gollum just falls on the ground in whimpers. Don't kill us. Don't hurt us with nasty, cruel steel. Let us live. Yes, live. Just a little longer. What's Gollum telling us? He's still going to like build something. He's got a part to play. He still has a part to play. What else? He knows his part's almost up. He knows he's about to die. Okay? Lost, lost, we're lost. And when precious goes, we'll die. Yes, die into the dust. When precious goes. Notice what word he doesn't use. If. He doesn't say if precious goes. When precious does, goes, we'll die. Yes, die into the dust the dust. Let us live just a little bit longer. Okay? Dust. And Sam's hand wavers. It would be just to slay this treacherous, murderous creature. Just and many times deserved. He deserves death, Frodo told Gandalf. He is at most only an enemy, or just an enemy. And also it seemed the only safe thing to do. But deep in his heart there was something that restrained him. He could not strike this thing lying in the dust, forlorn, ruinous, utterly wretched. Forlorn. What does that mean? Without hope. Ruinous. Totally destroyed. Utterly wretched. I think Tolkien means the Anglo-Saxon meaning behind the word wretched. It means utterly alone, an exile. 
no one to identify with, no one to call friend or relation. He himself, Sam, though only for a little while, had borne the ring, and now dimly he guessed the agony of Gollum's shriveled mind and body, enslaved to that ring, unable to find peace or relief. Where? Ever in life again. Now, I think when Tolkien puts in ever in life again, he might be opening the door to Gollum finding peace and relief. But not here. Because of his Catholic upbringing. Because of what Gandalf said back at the beginning. I have not much hope for Gollum's cure. But not much hope is not none. He does hope for Gollum's cure before the end. So Sam says, curse you, you stinking thing. Go away, be off. So Sam goes on after Frodo. And what does he see? Page 945. The light springs up from the flames of the lava. And there he sees Frodo on the brink of the chasm. And there's Frodo, black against the glare. And Sam cries, Master! And Frodo stirs, kind of looks at Sam, and speaks with a clear voice. I have come, but I do not choose now to do what I came to do. I will not do this deed. The ring is mine. Notice the pronoun. I, 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 I. Frodo's become totally self-aware. Why? Because the ring is now controlling him. The ring is mine. Puts it on his finger. He disappears. Sam gets decked from behind. Okay. And as far away, page 946, far away as Frodo put on the ring and claimed it for his own, even in Samoth Nower, his realm, the power in Barad-dûr was shaken. The tower trembled from its foundations to its proud and bitter crown. Now just imagine if it weren't little Frodo the High who had claimed the ring in the Samoth Nower. Imagine instead it were Glorfindel or Galadriel or Gandalf. Would the Tower of Baradur just kind of quiver? No, because Sauron would be quaking in his boots by that time. Okay? Frodo claim it where he is, what does Sauron immediately realize? One false step. Okay? The Dark Lord was suddenly aware of him and his eye piercing all shadows looked across the plain to the door that he had made and the attitude of his own folly was revealed to him. That's what it means partially when it says his eye pierced all shadows. He pierced false stratagems. He realizes what the men of the West are now doing out at his front gate. It's a diversion. Okay? And so what does he do? He turns all of his attention towards the Samoth Nower. And when he turns all of his attention, what does that actually do to his troops out at the Black Gate? Yeah, think of that one scene in one of the Star Wars films, you know, when the, they take out the spaceship that controls all the droids, and the droids just... That's essentially what happens to Sauron's forces. They are rudderless. They are aimless. Okay. From all his policies and webs of fear and treachery, from all his stratagems and wars, his mind took free. In other words, he's been thinking of all of his history before. And it's like he, like a dog shaking the water off its back. He shakes his mind and he sees things clearly now. He experiences recovery, you could almost say. Okay? And what does he see? The whole mind and power that wielded them, that is his forces, was now bent with overwhelming force upon the mountain. At his summons wheeling with a rending cry, the Nazgul fly to doom. Okay? And Sam gets up, he's dazed, and he sees Gollum on the edge of the abyss, fighting with an unseen foe. 
And suddenly he sees Frodo. And there he was, falling apart at the chasm's edge. But Gollum, dancing like a mad thing, holds the ring aloft. And a finger stuck through it. Precious, 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 my precious, oh, my precious. Notice how different that is than the, you know, where the ring falls, Frodo falls, Sam has to reach down, Frodo's reaching up to Sam, but down for the ring, which is just a mere copy of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you know, where they're going after the grail of Christ and they're dead. Let it go, kind of a utterly asinine. Not the Indiana Jones thing. This, yeah. Cliffhanger. Okay. There is a roar. The ring gets destroyed. Gollum gets destroyed. In 947. Well, this is the end, Sam Gamgee says a voice by his side. And there's Frodo at peace now. Neither strain of will, nor madness, nor any fear. His burden was taken away. Notice that. His burden was taken away. It was borne by sickness. He couldn't freely give it up. All right? Sam, you poor hand, and I have nothing to borrow for it. I would have spared him a whole land of mine, brother. <coughs> but do you remember Gandalf's words? Even Gollum may have something yet to do, but for him, not have destroyed the ring. Even look at Frodo's language there. But for him, I could not have destroyed the ring. Frodo didn't destroy the ring. He's, he's taking a little bit too much credit there. Okay? The quest would have been in vain, even at the bitter end. So let us forgive him. In other words, Gollum played his Part. What was Gollum's part? To destroy the ring. <laughs> Let's forgive him. You know, it's like Frodo saying, you know, a finger, it's not much. What did it cost Gollum to destroy the ring? It cost him his life. Okay. I'm glad you're here with me, Sam. Here at the end of all things. Well, what does he mean here at the end of all things? Yeah, Frodo thinks we're dead. We're goners. Okay. Pippin wakes up. The eagles are coming and stuff. Gandalf stirs. Gandalf realizes he did it. The realm of Sauron is ended, 949. The ring bearer has fulfilled his quest. Or somebody has. <laughs> okay. They see the mountains of shadow shake. They see the big black gate collapse on its own. Okay. So Gandalf called Gwaihir the Windlord to take him off to, into Mordor. In page 950, we're back to Frodo, to where he was at the end of chapter 3. I'm glad you're here with me, here at the end of all things, Sam. It's like everything in between then has been, meanwhile, back at the castle. Frodo, so am I, Master, and you're with me, and the journey's finished. But let's not give up. It's not like me somehow. Because what's Frodo doing? Sitting next to a volcano that's starting to erupt. And he's just sitting. Sam's like, um, can we get up? Well, Master, we could at least go further from this dangerous place here, from this crack of doom, couldn't we? Come, Mr. Frodo, let's go down the path at any rate. Let's get away from this 1,500-degree lava, you know. <laughs> and Frodo's like, oh, okay, if you want to. Guess you're right. You might, you know, we're going to die sooner or later. Guess a little bit later will be better. Fine. Very well, if you wish to go, I'll come. So they go, and they can't go anymore. They'd reached a low ashen hill, piled at the mountain's foot, but from it there was no more escape. It was an island now amid the torment of Oradruin. Why? Because pits and smoke fumes have opened up and there's lava now flowing. Now they're totally screwed. Okay? And they stood now in Frodo and Sam 
start to talk, and Sam's like, if only we could hear the tale now of Frodo the Nine-Fingered. Okay. And Gwaihir and Gandalf come down and rescue them. Okay. As Frodo and Sam are sleeping. Probably not sleeping. They're probably overcome by the fumes of the mountain. And they wake up, and they're at the field of Kermalan, which I'm going to skip almost all of. Okay. And what do we see? We see Gandalf when they wake up, and Aragorn heals them. We get chapter 5, the steward and the king. Okay. Um, we see Eowyn and Faramir, and Faramir is wooing Eowyn, and she really doesn't want anything to do with them until she finally gives in. Okay. And Eowyn and Faramir are married. Okay. But Aragorn can't really be king until what? Till what is found. Notice something has to be lost, the ring. But what needs to be found? The tree, the white tree. So Gandalf one day takes him off into the mountain, Mandalawin, takes him into an ice-covered place, and there, amidst all the ice and snow, is a little sapling. Okay. And we're going to skip a bunch. So Aragorn is crowned king. And notice you get this whole procession, and Frodo hands Gandalf the crown, and you know, like ring bearer. Like the ring bearer in a wedding. Okay. I had a couple friends who got married long, many years ago. And we used to joke, because we knew the little boy who was going to play the ring bear. We used to joke, you know, that we were going to put one of the one rings of power that you can buy on the little pillow, you know, for her to put on her husband's hand. <laughs> you know, one ring to rule them all. <clears throat> so the third age comes to an end, and we get to chapter many partings. Chapter 6, page 974. Aragorn says, we're going to leave in seven days, because Frodo wants to go home. Aragorn says, give us a week. And Arwen says, a gift I will give you, for I am the daughter of Elrond. I shall not go with him now when he departs to the havens, for mine is the choice of Luthien. And as she, so have I chosen. What does that mean? What is she choosing? She's choosing a human mortal life. Doesn't mean she'll die when Aragorn dies. Okay. But it does mean she will die. And she won't do what? She won't go to the halls of Mandos when she dies. To stay there for a long time and then to be reborn, reincarnated back into Middle Earth as the elves can do. Okay, Nor will she do what her father does. Sail from the Grey Havens and go off to the land of Amon where the elves will live forever until the world is destroyed. Okay? She will never, when Elrond leaves Middle-earth, she will never see Elrond again in Tolkien's cosmology. Period. All right? That's what she means there. But she says, you may pass into the West. In other words, she gives him her ticket. Where what? Until all your wounds and weariness are healed. See, nobody knows what happens to hobbits at the end of time. We know what happens to men in Tolkien's cosmology. We know what happens to elves. We don't really know what happens to hobbits or dwarves. It's probably safe to assume that dwarves have the same thing happen to him as happen to them as happens to elves. They just no don't exist anymore. They become Nothing, okay? Men are given the gift of death by Eru Iluvatar so that they will be joined with Eru Iluvatar, etc. So they make their way. And page 975, um, Aylmer and, and Gimli have to hash out their rash words about Galadriel and such. They go to Rowan. And I'm going to skip a bunch. Page 979. They make their way to 
Isengard. And they meet up with Treebeard. Okay, what is Gandalf assuming when they make their way to Isengard? Who's still there? Saruman is still in the Tower of Orthanc. All right. And so they meet up with Treebeard, and Gandalf says, uh, How's your work, my friend? In other words, have you replanted the Vale of Isengard? And how's Saruman? And Treebeard says, Well, you know, we're working on it. And Gandalf talks about the new age has come. And page 980, Treebeard goes, okay, I knew you were going to ask about Sarah Mann. Um, I let him go. Middle of the page, 980. He is gone. Yes, he's gone seven days. I let him go. Little left of him when he crawled out. Now, don't tell me, Gandalf. I promised to keep I know. And I kept him so kept him until he was safe, safe from doing any more harm. You should know that above all, I hate the caging of live things, but when Gandalf said, yeah, but he still tricked you. He still had the power of his voice. Okay. So Aragorn takes Orthanc back, but he says, I'm going to give them the valley and such. Keep watch on the tower. And Legolas and Gimli get ready to go off on their own because they're going to check out what? They've got two places to visit. Fangorn in the Glittering Caves. Because Gimli wants to show Legolas the pretty rocks. Okay? And Legolas wants to show Gimli the scary trees. <laughs> I'd rather go on the Glittering Rocks than among the scary trees. So, they keep going on. And what do we see? Page 983. Notice, Pippin takes leave of Aragorn, because Aragorn... And Arwen stopped at that point. But Pippin goes on, because he's heading back to the Shire. But Pippin's not now free to do whatever he wants. Because he laid his sword at the, at the feet of Denethor. So Aragorn has to tell him, uh, remember, you're a knight of Gondor. When I call, you come. Yes, Lord. Fool of a tuck. Page 983, they run into Saruman. And Gandalf says, well, Sarah, man, where are you going? What is that to you? Will you still order my goings? Are you not content with my ruin? You know the answer is no and no. Did Gandalf ever order Sarah man's goings? No. Okay. But he says, the king has taken on the burden. If you had waited at Orthanc, you would have seen him, and he would have shown you wisdom and mercy. Mercy. Then all the more reason to have left sooner, for I desire neither. He doesn't desire the king's wisdom, and he doesn't want his mercy. Why? If you are in need of somebody else's mercy, then what are you in relation to that individual? You're under, the, under their power. Okay? So he says, I want to get away out of his kingdom as quickly as possible. Gandalf. Then once more, you are going the wrong way. And I see no hope in your journey. Notice. Going the wrong way, Sarah Man. So what does Sarah Man need to do? He needs to turn around. What's another single word for turn around? Repent. Sarah Man needs to repent. I'm not talking in a theological sense. He needs to turn Around. He needs to go the direction opposite to where he's going. Okay? Will you scorn our help? We'll offer it to you. To me? No, no, no. Because I don't want your help. Galadriel. So, you are overtaken by good fortune, for now you have a last chance. Good fortune. In other words, fortune, whatever that is, has smiled upon you. This was meant to happen. Okay? If it be truly the last, I am glad, for I shall be spared the trouble of refusing it again. Notice what he doesn't do. He doesn't turn. He's unwilling to go back. Because what does it mean to go back? You retrace your steps to win. To where you made an error. 
to where you went wrong. Then you turn again to go a new direction. Well, Saruman doesn't think he's in error. He is still convinced he's right. Okay? So he says, all my hopes and I would not share yours. Well, what are Galadriel's hopes? To leave Middle Earth and there to live the rest of her immortal days, however you understand that. Okay? So he tells them, Go, I did not spend long study on these matters for naught. You've doomed yourselves, you know it. Well, what is he talking about? He's talking about she is herself in Lothlorien. Because what's going to happen to Lothlorien now that the ring is gone? It'll just become a regular, ordinary forest. And the trees will die, and they'll rot and decay, and new trees will come up. And a thousand years from now, or a thousand years from then, nobody will ever know that this was the dwelling of the elves of Lothlorien. Okay? He says, now what ship will bear you back across so wide a sea? Okay, and Gandalf tells Wormtongue, leave him. Leave him. Because Wormtongue says, oh, I wish I could leave him. Gandalf, leave him. What does Gandalf offer Wormtongue? Peace, hope, healing. Okay. Sure. He's like a slave. To so, Saruman asked if anybody has any pipe weed. And Frodo says, I'd give you some if I had any. Mary, you can have what I've got left if you wait a moment. Mary digs down into his pack, pulls it. Okay. What are they doing in giving Saruman pipe weed? How has Saruman treated them in all of their interactions with him? Like dirt, like slime like an enemy. And what are they willing to do? Oh, you want a nice smoke here? Let me give you, you know, like if it were cigars, let me give you this Monte Cristo. Let me give you this Cohiba. These are good cigars, by the way. Okay? <laughs> let me give you my best, essentially. They're offering him, essentially, alms. Alms for the poor. Sarah Man is now about as poor as it gets. He doesn't have anything. Okay. So Gandalf tells him, um, when Frodo says, I want to get to Rivendell, but before that, he says, I, we need to get home. There's something wrong at home. But we need to get to Rivendell first. Gandalf says, yes, I think you'd better do that, bottom of 984. But alas for Sarah Man, I fear nothing more can be made of him. Nothing more can be made of him. Meaning, Sarah Man cannot be made right. Or Sarah Man cannot go from being what he is into made back into what he was. He cannot be transformed into anything better. And because he cannot be transformed, which implies, let's say he's at this point. He cannot rise up. What's left? He can only remain here or sink. He hopes for Gollum's cure before the end. I think Gollum, in achieving what he achieved, Gollum gets his cure. I think destroying the ring is Gollum's cure. Okay? He hopes that Saruman can be changed. But he doesn't. Because he chooses not to. Alright. So they go on. And we're told, page 985. Right in the middle of the page. At length all was said, and they parted again for a while, until it was time for the three rings to pass away. Quickly fading into the stones and the shadows, the great cloaked people of Lorien rode towards the mountains. Galadriel's holding a ring up aloft, and Frodo knows it. Okay. And so they make their way. They go to Rivendell. They see Bilbo and such. They leave Rivendell. <coughs> and 
they make their way to Bree. And they get to Bree, they see Barlam and Butterbur. Gandalf explains that Strider is the new king of the south, and that he remembers the Prancy Pony, and that he likes his beer, and that he'll be coming up sometime. Okay, and Burdum, you know, just can't understand that. And then when they realize, based on their conversations with Bartleber, that things are not good in the Shire. Okay, page 995 at the bottom. Frodo says, I wonder what old Barliman was hinting at. Sam, I can guess some of it. What I saw in the mirror. Trees cut down and all. Mary, something's wrong with the South Farthing. Shortage of pipeweed. Pippin, whatever it is. Lotho, that is the guy who now lives in Bilbo's house, will be at the bottom of it. Gandalf says, um, you've forgotten Sarah, man. Mary, well, we've got you with us to patch things up. Mary's assuming we've got a wizard. He'll solve all our problems. I'm with you at present. But soon I shall not be. I'm not coming to the Shire. You must settle its affairs yourselves. That is what you trained for. Okay, that passage, that is what you have been trained for. Almost seems to imply that everything to Mary, Sam, Frodo, and Pippin has been for this one purpose. To prepare them to deal with problems in their own home. Okay? Obviously, that's not the case solely. I mean, Frodo and Sam went off to take care of the ring. But what Gandalf is, is suggesting there is all things occur. Like Boethius said in the Constellation of Philosophy. And so that what they've experienced up to this point is to prepare them for the next point. And what they experience there will prepare them for the next adventure, as it were. Okay? So that you get the same idea in The Hobbit. When, when Bilbo and Gandalf come back, you know, Gandalf has to tell Bilbo, imagine that everything that has happened has occurred solely for your benefit. You know, you don't disbelieve the old prophecies, do you? And what he's saying there is, things will happen as they are supposed to happen. And everyone has a role to play. So, my time is over. What was his time? He was a counterbalance to Sauron. Well, Sauron's gone. Gandalf's done. It's no longer my task to set things to rights, nor to help folk to do so. He goes, and you guys don't need help. Look at you, you're grown up. How big are Merry and Pippin? They're over four feet tall. They've been drinking int beer. <laughs> int draught or draft. The draft of ints, as it were. He says, me? I'm going to go talk with Bombadil. Such a talk as I, have had, as I have not had in all my time. He's a moss gatherer. I've been a stone doomed to rolling. My days of rolling are over. I'm going to sit and talk a while. All right? So they make their way, and we get to the scouring of the Shire. And if you remember the foreword, Tolkien says... This chapter was foreseen at the outset of the writing of the novel. He knew this would have to be dealt with. Why? What does Frodo think of the Shire? Why does he want to leave? He wants to save it. He wants to preserve it. He wants it frozen and doesn't happen. We can never freeze anything in time. We go away back, and even if that place hasn't changed, we have. Which means it's changed. Because our perceptions have changed. Okay? So what do they realize when they go back to the Shire? Now there are gates up across the Branduin. Okay? They make their way back to Hobbiton. 
And notice Mary and Pippin kind of put the f***ing into people. And they meet up with Farmer Cotton, and Sam meets up with Rosie. Okay. All the way back to Bag Inn, and they meet Sharky. And who is Sharky? Sarah Man. Page 1018. Frodo says to Sarah Man, when Sarah Man says, apparently you didn't expect to see it. I did not, but I might have guessed. A little mischief in a mean way. Gandalf warned me you were still capable of it. He says, oh, quite capable. You little hobbit lordings. You think you're all high and mighty because you hang around with Adriel, Elrond, Clorfindel, Aragorn, you know, the mighty. He says, and you thought no one could touch your home. Oh, no, Gandalf would look after your affairs. But look, Gandalf's gone. Now what are you going to do? Okay. Frodo. When he hears Sarah Man say, it will be pleasant to think of the damage that I've done to your home and your lives. It will be pleasant to think of that and set it against my injuries. In other words, Sarah Man's saying, this is my revenge. Frodo. Well, if that's what you find pleasure in, to you. If that's what you find pleasure in. If you find pleasure in other people's suffering, is what he's saying. I pity you. It will be a pleasure of memory only, I fear. Go. You, you're not going to get to stay and watch, in other words. Okay? The hobbits say, no, kill him, kill him. He's a villain and a murderer. Sarah Man, kill him, kill him. You can't touch me. You think I lost all my powers? Whoever strikes me will be accursed. Frodo's like, don't believe him. <laughs> He's lost all of his power. But I will explain. It is useless to meet revenge with revenge. My, has Frodo changed. You let him live? After everything he has done, he deserves death. He is just an enemy, Frodo says about Gollum at the beginning of the novel. And Gollum hasn't, hasn't even done anything against Frodo. Okay? Talk about wanting revenge. Here, it is useless to meet revenge with revenge. Why? Always get. An eye for an eye makes the world blind. Hand for an hand makes the world hate. In other words, it never ends. And what Tolkien is doing here is he's writing about this idea of feud. Okay. It's an old English concept, Anglo-Saxon idea, that in Anglo-Saxon, feuds always end one way, with one or both warring parties annihilated. Well, it's not a very positive ending, okay? So, Frodo says, it will heal nothing. That is, revenge doesn't bring about healing. Notice how Frodo has changed. Now he's concerned about healing. Gandalf doesn't kill Gollum. Why? Because he wants him to find a cure before the end. So he says, go, Sir Man. Sir Man calls for Grima. Grima shuffles after him. Sir Man tries, tries to stab Frodo. And a dozen hobbits, led by Sam, leap on him. And Frodo says, no, do not kill him even now, for he's not hurt me. Okay, now, we would say, if Sam kills him, justifiable homicide. I mean, it would be, in a legal sense, justifiable homicide, or wizard side, hysteria side, something. I do not wish him to be slain in this evil mood. Notice he's not saying I don't wish him to be slain. But you can't slay him out of anger. Frodo's not saying let's try him and then pronounce judgment. Okay. He was great once, of a noble kind that we should not dare to raise our hands against. 
Whoa. He was great once. And he was of, of a kind that we have no right judging. But he doesn't stop there. He is fallen and his cure is beyond us. We little hobbits, we can't help him find his cure. But I would still spare him in the hope that he may find it. Frodo knows people that are dead because of Saruman. And yet he hopes Saruman will find his redemption, his cure, his salvation, let's say. I'll bet there are people related to the people that Sarah Man is responsible for their deaths that don't share Frodo's <laughs> magnanimity, let's say. They probably say, no, send him over to our house. We'll take him out back. We'll teach him a few lessons. Okay? Frodo wants him to find his cure. And Sarah Man says, oh, you groan. You are wise and cruel, wise and wise, to want others to find their cure. It's this. Because wanting others to find their cure means you want them to find their purpose, their meaning, their end, which is ultimately healing. Okay. You robbed me of my revenge. You've robbed my revenge of sweetness. And now I must go hence in bitterness in debt to your mercy. In other words, I will live and I will be in debt to your mercy. Every day will be that dead, blessed little hobbit saved my life. Okay. I hate it in you. I'll not trouble you anymore. Okay? And so, Worm Tongue kills him, then they kill Worm Tongue. And Sam says, and that's the end of that. And we get chapter 9, The Grey Havens. A few years go by. What happens every October 6th? Frodo's sick in bed. His arm hurts from the Morgul blade that he suffered on Weathertop. What happens every March 15th or so? He's also sick, why? Because that's when Sheila bit him, okay? In other words, the ring is destroyed, the sire, Shire is saved, but what's Frodo's life like? He's got memories of these battles. He's got scars. Does his finger grow back? <laughs> no. That's a living reminder. And he's also got this itch <laughs> for wanting the ring back. Okay? So time goes on. Frodo was again ill in March, we're told, page 1025. And Frodo gives Sam, page 1027, the book that he's finished. An unexpected journey there and back again. What happened after Adventures of Five Hobbits, Tale of the Great Ring. And here Bilbo's hand had ended and Frodo had written The Downfall of the Lord of the Rings and the Return of the King. Okay. There you have it. It's almost finished. Sam, you get to finish the last few pages. So, page 1029. Sam ride off, and they meet up with Bilbo, and Galadriel, and Gandalf, and Gildor, and Elrond. And Sam asks, oh, where are you going, Master? To the Havens. And I can't come? Not yet. Not further than the Havens, though you too were a ring bearer, if only for a little while. Your time may come. Whoa! If may come, and he was a ring bearer for a little while, then who else might be able to go to Amon? Gollum. Gollum. After all, who's in more need of healing? Gollum. Frodo. Sam. Bo. Gollum. 
I don't know if Tolkien tells us where Gollum eventually ends up if he does it all in the 12 volume History of Middle Earth. I'll have to check that. So he says, your time may come. You will have to be one and whole for many years. You have much to enjoy, Sam. And Sam says, yeah, but I thought you would too. I thought you would live for years and years and years after everything you've done for the Shire. After all, you saved it. You deserve it. I too once. But I've been too deeply hurt, Sam. I tried to save the Shire, and it has been saved. But not for me. It must often be so, Sam, when things are Someone has to give them up, lose them, so that others may keep them. Talk about a Christian message. Okay? But you're my heir, and you'll get everything. And you have Rose and Eleanor, and then Frodo says, and you're going to have Frodo Lad and Mary and Pippin and Goldilocks and, you know, all these children. And he does. He ends up, I don't remember, he's got like 11 or 17 children. He's mayor for ad infinitum, etc. Right along with me. And so they go to the Grey Havens. Elrond and Galadriel pass out of Middle Earth. And they get to the Grey Havens, and there they see Círdan the shipwright, one of the first awakened elves. He's been around since the beginning. All right? Tall, long beard, gray and old. Notice, he's not around who looks like yesterday. He's gray and old. Okay? And then Frodo sees Gandalf, and he sees him as a ring. Narya the Great, put stone upon it red as fire. Hence Frodo finally realizes who had rings. Okay. Círdan, Gandalf, and uh, Galadriel. Okay. So Merry and Pippin show up. Why? Because Gandalf realizes it wouldn't be good for Sam to go home alone. And they, and they ride back. Notice Mary and Pippin don't ride all the way back to Hobbiton and bag in. They turn off at Buckland and go to Mary's home. And you get page 1031. At last they rode over the downs, took the east road, and the Mary and Pippin rode on to Buckland. They were singing again as they went. Sam turned to Bywater and so came back up the hill. His day was ending once more. And he went on and there was yellow light in, and the evening meal was ready and he was expected. Notice that image. Close your eyes and visualize it. Sam rides up the hill. He sees the windows in Bag End, and there's yellow firelight inside. Okay? And the evening meal was ready, and he was expected. And Rose drew him in. She doesn't stand her at the door, hands on her waist, go, where have you been? Okay? No. She welcomes him in. She brings him in. Sets him in his chair. Puts little Ellie in his lap. So what's the image? You can smell the dinner cooking. The firelight is warm. He's sitting in a lazy chair, lounge chair, or whatever. He's got his feet up on a footstool. His little daughter's in his lap. His wife is standing at his shoulder. This is domestic bliss. This is the last happy home, as it were. Okay? This is perfect. But especially for Sam. Why? It's all he ever wanted. He just wanted a wife, hearth, home, children, a little bit of garden to tend to. Notice he's not going to hire out a gardener. He's going to do his own gardening. He draws in a deep breath. Why? This is one of those all-encompassing, deep, cleansing, everything he wants. Well, I'm back. This is the ultimate, in terms of the fairy story essay, you catastrophic ending. In the sense of what Tolkien means by it. The consolation of the okay. This is meant to give us that glimpse of joy. That glimpse of 
the fulfillment of the heart desires. All right? Sam has it all. Does Frodo get the fulfillment of his desire? Yes, he does. Because what does he get? He's with Bilbo. And that's what he's always... He didn't want Bilbo to leave when Bilbo left at the beginning of the tale. He wanted to go with Bilbo. But Bilbo said, eh, your time's not yet. Okay? And then all throughout the journey, what did he want more than anything? To at least see Bilbo again. And not only does he see Bilbo again, what does he do? He goes to the land of the elves, apparently to live forever with him. With the elves. Singing silly songs. Okay? That's not what Sam wanted. Sam wanted here to be happy. Well, what's happened in the intervening years? The party tree did get knocked down. So what does Sam do? He plants a new Malorn and grows a new tree. He goes with his little box of Lothlorien dust and he goes around to certain places and then he scatters it. Okay? So that everything grows like it's never grown before. So that the Shire is like a new, it's like the Shire reborn. It's like new Narnia at the end of the, la of, um, the last battle. Okay? That's the happy ending. All right. We'll stop there unless you have questions. Um, send out the exam. If I have it on this computer. I'll send it out in about 15 minutes. If I don't, I'll send it out when I get home later on this afternoon. The other day, you'll have somewhere between four and six essay questions to respond to. You choose one and one only. Follow the direction. Okay? It will be very clear about the number of quotations to have. If you don't, suffer the consequences, which you already know they are from the first day of class. Okay? And I say on the syllabus that it'll be due the 26th, the direct on the paper, because I might push it back to the 28th, just to give you a little more time.